morning we were talking about the um, when we were in the class of Lotus Sutra. Um, as the words that were here, uh, those who were here uh, might remember that Roshi said that if the chapter is about the other, how we relate. And um, it's, it's uh, uh, while I was hearing that, it, it reminded me of the Har Sutra. We read it every Sunday. And to me, it's, it's always been a very uh, interesting and, and probably the most important text that, that, that I've read, and I've read it probably hundreds of times. And it doesn't seem to stop conveying. Uh, uh, teachings. It's it's it seems like one day I understand it, or I get the impression of understanding, <laughs> but then again I read it again while we're chanting, and then I see it, and it's in a total different light. And it just keeps going and going and going. And sometimes it's just one little line just strikes me. Like, boom, what's there? And then it, it, it just keeps repeating. But what I, uh, uh, I realize is that, okay, I understand it. I get this. And then the next time I get that. And the next time I get that. So, it came to a point when I'm okay. It's more of the same. I'm really not getting under the teachings in it because they all come as impressions, as conceptions. I process them through my mind and I try to understand them with my mind. Therefore, it says right there. Uh, uh, Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, when practicing deeply with Prasha Paramita, clearly saw that all five skandhas are empty and pass beyond all suffering. So the fact that we have to study the Har Sutra with our mind, it's, 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 what should I call it, a conundrum? The fact that we need to read it to understand it, but at the same time, we need to not read it. We need to go beyond that point in, in which we try to understand with words and I think when, when we read something and just read it in this case like I say you know probably read it hundreds or thousands of times I we wouldn't even want to count and it's always been something but I just realized that the fact that I don't try to understand it, it just pops at me. And and earlier this morning I was talking to someone here, and we're talking about Buddhas. You know that how uh, um, innumerable Buddhas and 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 people that that are enlightened. And I said, well, there probably has been millions of Buddhas. It's just that when you come to a point when you go beyond all the five skandhas and, and, and you're suffering and they're just like the Mahaka, the Heart Sutra says, you have no words. You have no words for to explain anything. And I heard someone saying that probably the person with the most understanding or enlightenment, I should put it, is the one that cannot explain the Dharma. Doesn't have a word. Because I guess the moment we try to put in words what we understand, it's it already lost its its, its meaning. It's it's uh, uh, 
it's beyond words that where we get the teachings is not um, it's not what we say because words can have a, a meaning but one word could have nine different mean ten different meanings including me one same word so that's why the Heart Sutra has always been such a, an important text for me and and like I said I, 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 I just try to stop understanding it and just be with it be with it and that's how you know how you work cons you try to solve it with your mind well good luck it's gonna you know, go for the rest of your life trying to figure out <laughs> what what the meaning or the teaching is and so when you sit with with something it seems like words have a way to really lie to us of course we need words to describe what we need to convey but at the same time when we say words we we get a mental picture of the word or the meaning behind the, the what what's being told to us but uh, uh if we just sit with it or or be with it i think that's when the real teaching comes someone asked me earlier what are you going to talk about i don't know i've been all week trying to figure out a topic and just five minutes before coming in here I was asked again what are you going to talk about I don't know I don't know because it seems like like I say the moment uh, uh, we try to or at least I try to pin something down and have a teaching or have the intention or giving a teaching it seems like I see that what am I going to teach? What am I going to teach? There's nothing to teach. There's nothing. I could say something that is going to mean something to you, but I believe that when you try to give explanations it doesn't matter they could give us the key to the universe to open the universe but if we don't know how to turn that key might as well it's not gonna work so anything that I say I feel first of all I feel I feel that I have nothing to teach to be honest with you because your real teacher is within you and nobody's gonna wake you up nobody's gonna come and hit you in the head while well, there 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 have been instances in my case when seeing Roshi has just moved his hand and it seemed like someone hit me in the head with sledgehammer just the fact that he moved his hand it struck me but I think those are instances when when we are just sitting with with what is instead of trying to understand we really get the teaching behind behind the meaning this is this uh, the teaching without words so I feel that I have nothing to teach because even if I try it's you who has to do the work you are the one who has to really find within yourself your teacher i think if there's a teacher's job is to create teachers so we all can be constantly teaching in that sense we're not there are no teachers we all just uh, i've always thought that teachers are just a step on the step on the ladder to our path so I'm just a step who's gonna help someone else come and that one is gonna 
be a step for someone else. And we just keep adding and, and then we come to the conclusion there's no, we're just being, we're just being at each instant. So there's really nothing we can pin down except just the notion that being here. So that teaching is just a step, step in the, in the ladder for someone else. And, and we just keep doing that. So you might come to a point where you say, why, then why am I studying? Why am I practicing? That's a good question to ask ourselves. Why am I doing this? Remember those are three phrases of great fate, great doubt, and great determination. We need to have faith that we're going to see something, but if we don't doubt, then it's more of the same. It's interesting the way our mind or ego keeps creeping back up onto ourselves. We might have a small awakening, we might see a little something, and then that little something, that little awakening becomes another um, delusion. Oh, I saw something. Oh, wow. I'm getting there. So, if we keep constantly trying to attain something or go somewhere, we just keep, you know, it's like a dog, we're just chasing our tails. And, and that's exactly what happened with the, when I read the Lotus Sutra and I was like, wow, just trying to understand it in a different way. How many ways am I going to understand it? Probably millions of ways. Until I said, let's just see what, what it says, what it really says. So the teacher that, that we'll have inside is the one we will see, we'll see that, that it's always next to us. It's always there next to us. I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks or three weeks ago when I gave another talk, when I said that your, your teacher, the teaching is always next to you. Whatever your situation in life is, it might be I have a lots of problems, I have emotional problems, I have economical problems, I have any sort of problems. And you might say, I don't have a problem with my life. My life is perfect. Well, that's your teaching too. What do you need to learn from your life being perfect? If you're having problems, well, maybe there's something you need to learn about relationships. Maybe you need to learn something about money. <clears throat> if you don't have any problems, then maybe you need to learn something about compassion, about sharing. You are in a position where you have nothing to worry about. Well, maybe that's your teaching that you have to learn to. There's always a teaching so that that teacher that well, the um, Indians call your guru, it's always there with you. Is Of course, we have Roshi, you know, he's, he's my teacher. Many of us here is our teacher. But I keep saying, and I love to say it, the teacher is just the finger that points at the moon. It's just that. The teacher is going to tell you, that's the door. It's up to you whether you want to cross that threshold. Open that door and cross it.